This video is going to explain potential energy in the context of making and breaking covalent bonds. If you've not watched it already, you might want to check out the cohesive chemistry video specifically on potential energy before watching this video. In order to explain potential energy in this context, it's going to be useful to take an example. So here's a box and in it I'm going to draw two hydrogen atoms. Here's the first one and you can see I've drawn my hydrogen atom with one proton in the middle or the nucleus and one electron orbiting around in a shell or energy level. Here's the second atom and in this example these two hydrogen atoms are my system. Let's first consider how these two atoms will arrange themselves to find the most stable position. With an understanding of electrostatic forces, I know that my two protons in the nuclei will be attracting electrons. And I also know, according to the octet rule, that atoms tend to combine in such a way that they fill their outer shell. So for a hydrogen atom, that means they will likely arrange themselves in order to get two electrons in their outer shell, which would then be full. Knowing this, I would expect my atoms to arrange themselves like this. Overlapping their outer shells allows them to share those two electrons, and the covalent bond itself is the attraction between each nuclei with a positive charge and the shared pair of electrons shown by these red arrows. And if these two nuclei try to move even, even closer together, actually they're going to start repelling each other. So at some point, approximately as I've drawn it in the diagram, we're going to reach our most stable position. And when we talk about stability in chemistry, we are talking about a low potential energy state. So let's add a little bar graph to show the potential energy of my system at this point in time. In order to break this bond, what I need to do is move my atoms away from each other. And the further away from each other that I move them, the less stable my system becomes. Why is it less stable? Well, if I let go of them again, actually, they're going to be attracted back into this starting position. So let's move them apart a bit. And let's move them away a little bit more. So as we continue to move them away from each other, you can see that the potential energy keeps increasing and my system is becoming less stable. Now, at some point, when they are far enough apart that there are no longer electrostatic attractions, my covalent bond is effectively broken. So at that point, there will be no more potential energy in that system because they are too far away from each other to attract again. This shows that to break a covalent bond, I am increasing the potential energy in my system. So if I consider the reverse process, making a covalent bond, let's see what happens. We're seeing the reverse process. And as they move closer and closer, the potential energy drops lower and lower as my system becomes more stable again. Let's now consider the key points from this video. Firstly, a covalent bond is a system of low potential energy meaning it is stable. In order to break a covalent bond, I require an increase in potential energy in my system, meaning the system is becoming less stable. And lastly, when making a covalent bond, we require a decrease in potential energy as my system is becoming more stable. As an additional point, it's worth remembering that whenever there is a change in potential energy in my system, there must be an energy change also in my surroundings. 
So if the potential energy in my system has increased, that must mean that the energy in my surroundings, probably kinetic energy or thermal energy, has decreased. And conversely, if the potential energy in my system has decreased, it must mean that the energy in my surroundings has increased. As remember, the overall amount of energy in my universe must remain constant.